Welcome to Ghostly. Is Conway Castle haunted? Ghostly is a podcast that comes out every other week, except for this month, because we are weekly right now. In each episode, we take a ghost story or paranormal event and look into its complete history. Rebecca then gives us evidence proving that the story is real, and my job is to debate those pieces of evidence and get you, the listener, prepared to vote on if it's real or not. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, we're your host. I'm Pat. And I'm Rebecca. What's been going on, Rebecca? Uh, It's ghostly season. It is the most ghostliest time of the year. (laughs) Yeah, so very busy. Lots of fun stuff going on. Uh, Lots of uh, Halloween decorating. Yeah, Uh, but but we got ghostly stuff going on. uh, Yes. Yeah, so on October 16th, we are going to be at Wizard World in Chicago doing a panel with the amazing Scott Larson. Yes, on Chicago Urban Legends. Yes, I am. and of course, it's going to be hauntings too. <laughs> and then the big, big, big announcement is on December 12th, 2021, at 3.30 p.m., we will be doing a panel at C2E2. It has been our dream since starting Ghostly. Yeah, we've gone we've gone to C2E2 every year. We love it. Last year We've we- gone to Scott's panels every single year. Yeah, and we finally uh have an opportunity. Last year they had the incredible Ursula on. Mhm. And I mean, where do you go from there but to Ghostly? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be super fun and we hope you uh if you're in the area interested uh that you make it make it out, make it to the panel. We'd love to to meet you, see you. Yeah. And uh, spread the word. And we'll do a meetup, I'm sure, with Bob After Dark, too, like we usually do. Yeah. and Or we'll so. be there. And we'll certainly be there at the panel and after. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we do have some shout outs. Uh, there are two ways to get a shout out on Ghostly. The first way is to give us a review on Apple Podcast. We always love the five star reviews, but we will read any and all reviews that we receive. And the second way is to either buy us a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash ghostly podcast or going to our website, ghostlypodcast.com, and hitting the Buy Us a Coffee button in the menu bar. You could even become a member right now. Yeah, absolutely. And so I guess our first shout-out should be to uh, Kevin. Yes, Kevin, thank you so much for your your coffee donation. (laughs) Now, I will be honest, we don't always use the money for coffee because, I mean... We spend a lot of money doing Ghostly, so it helps to pay back some of the money, and we are so appreciative. It really helps out. I mean, we would do this for nothing, but I mean, it's so to, great to be, to be do appreciated. It for no- be, to, to even break even would be amazing. So That is my dream one day, <laughs> is to break even with it. Uh, and then also, we have a couple of, re- of reviews. I'll read the first one, and then... You could read the second one. Sounds good. The first one is a five-star review from Shantrain, 1975. Excellent and fascinating paranormal dot, dot, dot. Paranorma dot, dot, dot. Paranormal podcast is my guess. But I can't see it, though, so I can't say that that's what she said. Okay. Could be paranormal piece of poop. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) But let's read the review. Maybe that'll give us some insight into what she was saying in there. Sounds good. Uh, This is a must-listen podcast. It's top-notch. The hosts are very knowledgeable, and their voices are so soothing that you could probably sleep to their podcast, except the topics are so chilling. I listen on a podcast app. I'd like to name the app, but I don't think that's allowed. That is totally allowed. Um, But anyways, give them a listen. You won't be disappointed. 
Thank you so much, and train. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. I, I just can't believe it. Yeah, very nice. Um, all right, so I'm going to read our next review. And actually, our next review is not just a review. It actually also is going to be our listener mail. What? Yeah, because this review includes a story. Oh, awesome. So we're going to get both... Both uh, knock down both things with uh, with one 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 review. All right. Um, all right. So this is my favorite name. I think we've had so far for a review. Uh, Father of Jedi. Wow. So I don't know who his children are, but not, they must not be of amazing. the Jedi. No, of Jedi. Just Father of Jedi. So he's got some Jedi kids. I'm guessing they're amazing. I don't know. No, he's the start of the Jedi. Oh, that's what he's it's saying. Like the father of the of well, again, just the Jedi Order. Father of Jedi. Father of Jedi. Period. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, he says uh, the <laughs> title, the only podcast I listen to. Five wow. stars. Okay. Here we go. So we got review slash listener mail. Long time listener here and so far still a skeptic. Oh. If you are. He's lo- a Jedi skeptic. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> if you are looking for a great show with both sides of the story, this is it. Both hosts are well-rounded entertainers with the guests keeping it fresh. I usually listen while mowing the lawn and the mundane task takes on such an enjoyable experience that my lawn is quite well-groomed. Especially with our last episode because it was a little long. It was. It was awesome. I was excited. Uh, So if you are looking for something to improve those moments when you can't read, watch something, or play a game, then I recommend you turn this on. Uh, And I agree with that. That's how I listen to podcasts. I listen to them while I'm doing other things that don't take a lot of mental effort. Um, And it's a great way to distract myself and keep myself going. Uh, I listen to them as I edit them. (laughs) There you go. No, I'm just kidding. All right. The standout episode for me so far was on sleep paralysis. Yes. That was such a good episode. And we had uh, guest Amanda on. Yes. uh, Who gave us her really creepy story. So if you haven't listened to that one yet, go check it out. Uh, Because as an avid lucid dreamer, sleepwalker, and waking dreamer, Mm. I experienced sleep paralysis fairly regularly. When I was young, my waking dreams didn't bother me too much because they did not turn into nightmares until I got older. The first was when I was 10 and I woke in my brother's arms with my heart racing and confusion. I was recovering from the flu and had taken NyQuil, which still has a dra- dra- uh, drastic ev- effect on my dreams. Yeah, it's called Comaquil. Oh, jeez. Uh, I remember dreaming that night of going into my parents' room and finding their drowned bodies in the waterbed. My brother told me how I woke him up by climbing down from our top bunk bed and went into our parents' room only to begin screaming for my mother as I ran back. He chased me through the house, and finally he had to tackle me in the living room. Wow. I remember the tears on my face and how he asked what I'd done because my only words to him had been, I didn't mean it. Mommy and daddy come back. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, but that would be so terrifying. Okay. Like most sleepwalkers, my eyes had been open and my body navigated the house in reality but I was seeing the dream until I woke. Finally, I remember that our parents had left early that morning. It took a bit for the feelings of horror to subside, and I didn't use NyQuil for a long time after. Mm. As the years passed, I would sleep in late to enjoy lucid dreams and experimented with different white noises to see about waking in the dream world to control it. My first sleep paralysis happened at 13 years of age. We went to Silver Dollar City, and I was napping in the back of the van. Normally, my position in bed is on my stomach, but in the van, I was on my back with arms resting on my chest. I can remember waking and hearing my parents chat in the front, but I couldn't feel my body for quite a bit. It was the first time I felt panic as each word passed between mom and dad while my body remained still. I had a strong desire for them to touch me so I could feel my body again. If they just knew I was awake but couldn't move anything... They were pictured in my mind right there, but even my eyes might not have existed because I couldn't feel them to make them open. Finally, it passed and I was restored. I told no, I told no one um, as the episodes continued, and I figured that figured out that sleeping on my back was a recipe for lousy mornings. 
Um, After finally telling my mother, she told me how sorry she was because it's genetic from her. She had hoped to be the last in her family with it. Anyway, the research I have done revealed that we have a hormone that the body uses to shut down our muscles during dreams. Oh, we did talk about that in the episode, right? I believe so, Um, yeah. So that we don't act them out. There is footage of cats and dogs that are asleep with their sleep glands numbed and without the hormone um, to be still, they walk, prowl, and hunt in their in their dreams. People often have glands that can malfunction and leave them stuck while the body waits to secrete the waking stimulant and restore body function. When people say they see shadow shadows during episodes, I truly have doubts because I've tried to open my eyes during episodes and can't. The waking nightmare I experienced as a child shows how the dreams can fool us into seeing familiar settings with horrific new details. Soon my daughter will be eight, and like my mother, I hope this malady skips my child. My wife knows that if I am sleeping in and she finds me on my back to touch me just in case I'm trapped in my body, silently avoiding panic as I wait to be brought back. Thanks, Ghostly, for great entertainment. Oh, well, thank you, Father of Jedi. I appreciate that. Very nice skeptical May the force be with mail you. for you there. Yeah, I like that. Uh, you know, I could kind of do lucid lucid dreaming. Really? Yeah, not always. Um, but sometimes I could break into my dream and totally change where it is and go wherever I want to go. Wow, I can't yeah. even imagine. But I don't get like, like a lot of times people have these lucid dreams where they can tell you what's happening like across the world at that given time. And then they can uh, actually like, you know, look at that and see that it, that it's true or something. Like I can't do that, Mm. but I can kind of break into my dreams and yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, That sounds tiring. Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) Well, uh, you know, thank you so much for the review and, the Lister Mail. And may the force be with you. <laughs> and so if you have a story to share um, or a review to leave, you know, if you want to leave a review um, on Apple Podcasts or wherever you can leave a review, we love it. Um, but then if you want to share a story with us, you can send it to info at ghostlypodcast.com or use the contact form on ghostlypodcast.com. Or you can uh, send us a snail mail. We love actual mail. I do. Uh, to P.O. Box number 264, Geneva, Illinois, 60134. You can find all of that on ghostlypodcast.com at the bottom of the page. Especially during uh, spooky season. Like, I'd love to get a Halloween card. Oh, my gosh. That'd be great. Yeah. And with your spooky story, too. I mean, Ooh, it doesn't yeah. have to have a spooky story, but if you have one, we'd love to hear it. All right, so I don't think we need to do a, uh, the polls, right? Well, let's do a check in on the polls because it is going to be a little weird yeah. this month, right? Yeah, we I, you know we didn't give them much time to actually vote. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have multiple polls on our poll page. Yeah, so we we're just going to keep, keep them going throughout the month, yeah. and then we're going to keep track of things, and we'll keep you updated at the end of every episode how the previous polls are doing. That sounds good. Do you want to do a quick check-in on Enfield right now? No. Where, where we're at? No, not really, but yeah. Well, I mean, it's 50-50. Oh, oh then yeah, we should do that. <laughs> I mean, this is it, guys. If you have an opinion- So we just need one skeptic to vote right now. Uh, right. I need my believers to come out, please. <laughs> now, come, uh, let us know what you think. We'll have at least another week here or so of voting for, for Enfield. And, uh, and then, of course, please- I'm going to keep them up. I'm just going to keep them up the whole month. The whole month. Okay, awesome. So definitely vote uh, about today's episode too, right? Yeah, absolutely. So about Conway Castle, we want to know. You just go to ghostlypodcast.com slash polls, or you could, you know, it's easier just to go to ghostlypodcast.com and click on polls button. Yeah. you Again, our show works because of you. We want- your because of input. me? No, not oh. you, the listeners. Oh, the listener. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we want to hear your voice, right? Like we do this debate, right? Last week, it got a little heated with our debate. But in the end, we do not decide if something is haunted. You decide if it's haunted. And so in we need your vote. We need your vote. And then we'll I don't know. Think, I don't think mine was that heated. I wasn't that emotional about it. Uh-huh. You feel like you were just like... Totally, and just I was like, guys, it's total make believe. I mean, Come just on. whatever, man. All right, but what I would like to also say is the overall rating right now for the Enfield Poltergeist stands at four point five eight. Interesting. So even though it's fifty fifty, it's a little tilted on the skeptic side. I I would say so. 
Even the believers are saying, yeah, yeah, I don't know. (laughs) All right. So in the past years, we put together a series of episodes in October. Uh, That's always fun for us. But you know what? We, We feel that it's missing something. So what we decided to do is have different episodes, but have a theme going on. It might sound different to you, but what we're going to do is each episode, you're going to be able to vote on if you think it's real or not. And each episode, we're going to have a debate. So uh, we were looking for something special to do. So since this is the spooky month, we decided that we were going to use the concept of haunted castles. I'm really, really excited about this. Uh, You'd be surprised because... There's a lot of castles out there. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually. Well, I. It is surprising that there's a lot of castles still standing. Yes. What's not surprising is that they're haunted. Uh, to I. Me. Yeah, to me that that is a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you search for Conway Castle, that's what we're going to call it. I don't know how to really pronounce it. I don't know. I listened to a few videos. That's what people said. Yeah. So our. <laughs> So if you uh, do a search for Conway Castle, you'll find that it is always near the top of every haunted list. So we figured we'd start with it, you know? Absolutely. Start with the big... I mean, we are searching for the truth here. So might as well start with the biggest. Absolutely. Absolutely. Although there are some other ones that I'm really excited about. They're going to keep getting spookier, guys. (laughs) It's going to be fantastic this month. And I've been to all of these castles that we're going to do except one wow i've i've been to one of them so <laughs> that that'll be nice to talk about that all right um so do you have a ghost story for us of course all right let's hear it okay it's time for a spooky tale from rebecca I'm having trouble understanding what happened yesterday. It was unlike anything I've experienced before, and I hope that I never do again. I took my six-year-old daughter with me to visit Conway Castle. I'd heard they did a good job restoring it and also making it safer to explore, and my daughter loves old castles. She likes to pretend to live there, sometimes as a princess and sometimes as a knight. We had a great time. We took a tour because I thought that way we could learn more about each part of the castle. It was so interesting. At one point, the guide was telling us about a battle that had happened and how all the soldiers fought valiantly to defend the castle and the town. It was a thrilling tale. My daughter, however, did not seem to be paying attention. I mean, at six, she was really more interested in doing her own exploration. So she was looking around on her own while he was talking. She wasn't far from me, but she was in the interior part of the courtyard uh, we, we all stood in, and I admit I wasn't watching her every second. When it was time to move on to the next place, I had to call for her, and she didn't answer. So then I had to go looking for her. I found her staring intently at a wall. <laughs> I asked her, what was she looking at? And she didn't answer. I actually had to shake her and tell her, honey, we need to move on. She looked at me with wide eyes and said, this is a dangerous place, mama. Bad things happened here. I wasn't quite sure what to say to that. I mean, I was sure she must have heard the tour guide talk, but he really didn't necessarily say anything that violent. I told her that there had been frightening things that happened here, but that was a long time ago. And we didn't have anything to worry about now. She said, oh, I know that. The people here protect us. They get rid of all the bad guys that want to hurt us. At this point, I really didn't know what she was talking about, but I didn't want to get lost from the tour. I just wanted to move on. So I said, it's okay, honey. And I grabbed her hand to get back on track. She came with me, no struggles, and everything seemed okay. She was quieter, more observant, as we visited more parts of the castle. Then the tour guide said something I wasn't expecting. He said, several visitors have claimed to see the ghosts of soldiers from hundreds of years ago on these grounds. 
and my daughter grabbed my shirt and whispered to me, I saw them. What? I said. That's who told me about this place and the danger, she said. There was a soldier downstairs. I talked to him. He was nice, but scary too. He was there when you came to find me. Didn't you see him? I'd like to say I knew the right thing to do in that moment, uh, but I'm not sure that I did. All I could do was look at her. I asked if she was scared, and she said, No, he told me they protect visitors to the castle. In that moment, I decided I didn't want to scare her. I didn't know what was real, but if she was feeling protected and content, I didn't want to ruin that by doing what I wanted to do, which was to scream. Needless to say, we left immediately. I told her we needed to get home and she was fine leaving. She hasn't said anything about it since then and she slept fine. But I sure didn't. Wow, okay. (laughs) So how much of that is fact versus made up Rebecca stuff? Uh, Most of it is made up. Just that there are, in fact, people that claim oh, to okay. see there's no little girl. Go- no, no oh, little okay. girl, none of that. Just a, 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 a version of, of the, I'm, I'm guessing what stories people maybe have. Mm. Um, because, again, there, there are soldiers sighted Absolutely. on these castle grounds. Uh, all right. So we're going to go ahead and take a break. And then when we return, we're going to talk about the history. Pat, what do creepy stories, funny ghost memes, and inside ghostly information have in common? Um, my life. (laughs) Well, yes, but (laughs) no, it's also Ghostly Society on Facebook. Oh, yeah, I mean, that too, of course. But aren't all ghostly listeners in Ghostly Society? Not yet. What? I mean, that means that they're missing out on all my jokes. Yeah, they are. And missing out on chatting and sharing with other listeners and us, of course. We love talking to our listeners. If you haven't yet, you should consider joining our private group on Facebook called Ghostly Society. Let's hope now they will. Unless they're a woman in white. Uh Uh-oh. So I want to talk about a couple of things before we begin the history. And uh, so I took a tour of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales way back in the year 2000. In the year 2000. (laughs) I knew you were going to do that. (laughs) In the year 2000. (laughs) Sorry. All right. Well, our our tour guide was really good. He knew his stuff. He was was very much like the English version of Tony. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, he, he knew his stuff. Uh, he told us about a girl though, that had left her journal. Cause each one of us was given like a journal and I didn't record anything in mine, but, uh, but I bet now you wish you had, I do. We also had a map that we would highlight, you know, the, um, like where we went. Oh yeah. And the roads that we took. Right. Cause you think you're going to remember all that stuff. Yeah. At the time. You don't, you really don't. I mean, it was like 16 days. So you, you, you just don't. Uh, so he found this journal and didn't know who it belonged to. So he had to actually like read some of it. Ah. I know you're not supposed to do it, but it was a travel journal. So it was a little different than like your diary or Are something. Sure, sure. Uh, so he you know, looked, at the, looked at all the dates that, you know, the tour was to try to figure out who it was. And it said numerous times, ABC, ABC. And he he couldn't figure out what it was, but he eventually figured out who the person was. So he contacted them and said, you know, I'd like to mail back the the journal to you. But uh, only thing is, I want to know what ABC is. And she said, oh, anytime that we saw a castle, 
I would write down ABC. It stands for another bloody castle. <laughs> so that's what it was. And I just, I, I say this because I want you to know there are so many castles. That is so many. true. I mean, I haven't been to Wales, but I was in Ireland and England and Scotland. And yeah. There's a lot of castles. <laughs> I mean, that, I, I love that about, you know, the UK and Europe that they... Um, that they don't get rid of their history like we do here in the United States. United States, where you know it's like something happened here. Okay, well, we're gonna build we're gonna build a mall over it. You know, it's <laughs> like we don't we don't keep those structures like uh, they did. So I came to realize that there are three different types of castles all over Europe and the United Kingdom. Uh, so the first kind is a castle in ruin, right? It's it's, you know, rem- remnants of a castle that once was. And you can make out some of it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a lot of rocks all over the place, mm-hmm. too. So there might be a lot more than I even realize. Mm. Um, but then the second type is a castle that is remodeled to look like it did back in its day. Yeah. Absolutely. Or supposedly. Yeah. There at least it's, it may not be perfect, but they at least they make it so that you can really kind of see a little bit more, maybe explore safely. Yeah. Yeah. It, it feels like going to medieval times when you're in those. Right. Uh, and then there's a third kind of castle, which is what I like to call like a fairy fan- fantasy castle Ooh. where, you know, they put things in there that would that wouldn't possibly have been there during those days, like gold toilets and stuff like that. Uh, like know? actual furniture and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, in the second one, they put furniture too, but it's like Depending, things yeah. that look like uh, stuff from back in those days. Okay. I mean, they put fancy four four post beds in these, mm. you know, fairy fantasy castles. And you can actually stay there, I think, sometimes yeah. depending on the castle. There's a few of those anyway. There, so there's a actually, few. Yeah. Uh, so I would like to say that Conway is mostly the second kind. Mm-hmm. It's got beds set up and stuff like that. But it, it also is a little bit of the first kind that it's half in ruins. Uh, like, like depending, some of the towers, they don't have like... Um, steps going up to levels and stuff like that. So it's half in ruin, half. And that really, it just gives you a a awesome feeling of, you know, looking at an old piece of history. Absolutely. It's really cool. Um, there's a lot of um, videos out there if you want to take a look at it. Um, but I, I, I would love to go see it myself someday. Well, well, well I have. I know. Yeah. So... Uh, yes. Conway has a rather long history. In the location where Conway is today, it was previously occupied by a Cistercian monastery, which was a fairly strict order of monks and nuns in the Catholic order. Mm. Even I, I think there are still some, and they live out the rules from back in those days. I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it was also very close to another castle called Degemway Castle. Yeah, by the way, we're going to try our best if there's any yes. Welsh words. <laughs> but there's a lot of Welsh in here. Now, another thing I will tell you about going to Wales is um, I couldn't understand the people. I, I, I know that seems bad, but uh, and they were talking in English. They weren't talking in Welsh, <laughs> but they were talking very fast. And um, their accent made it very difficult for me to understand them. Ireland was the complete opposite. They had a hard time, like, understanding me. They didn't know what I was saying. But you could understand them. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> it was really weird. Um, so back in, in, in Conway's early days, the King of England and the Welsh Prince both vied for control of this land. Mm. Um, it's pretty obvious, you know, it was like a very good area. It's right on... Um, Right on some water and stuff. So oh, yeah. it, it's definitely a really good area good for them. strategic place. Absolutely. Uh, so the war started in the 1070s. Mm. It even feels weird to say that. Yeah. Uh, and it had various times where there would be peace. But during the 13th century, it really ramped up. Edward I invaded Wales with a huge army. And in March of 1283, he occupied Aberconway. Uh, during this attack, much of Degenway was destroyed and left in ruins. But Edward decided to build a new castle, and this is one of those types of castles that walled in the entire town. 
Oh, I think I did see that um, or when I was doing my research. Yeah. The wall around the town. So within days of his decision, work began on the new castle. Now, Rebecca, how long do you think it would take to build a castle of Conway's size back in the 12th century? Well, I would think it would take a while, especially with the like putting the wall all the way around the town. Yeah. I mean, like I, I, I mean, I know we're not quite in later years. I mean, they would build, you know, the big um, cathedrals and things like that, and those could take like a hundred years to build. So this maybe wasn't quite that long, but I would think like ten years, twenty years. Well, think of like like Egyptian pyramids; those would take lifetimes. Oh, several yeah, several lifetimes several to lifetimes. build. Yeah, you know, so. Conway took four years. Whoa. Four years to completely build out the castle um, because they actually brought in a lot of laborers from all over England to do this. They're like, hey, guys, get over here. We need to build this thing quickly. Well, and I guess they had templates to go on for what they wanted. Absolutely. And Edward's accountants, uh, which I never think of accountants back, you know, in the 13th (laughs) century, but Edward's accountants did not separate the cost of the town walls from that of the castle. But the total cost of the two projects came out to around 15,000 pounds, which was a huge sum of money for that period. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, I can only imagine what that would be today. Millions of dollars. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, The castle's constable was by a royal charter of 1284, also the mayor of the new town of Conway and oversaw a castle garrison of 30 soldiers, including 15 crossbowmen, supported by a carpenter, a chaplain, a blacksmith, engineer, and a stonemason. Mm. Now, that's the thing about, you know, castles. They don't need many people to defend them. The walls itself are what what are the defense. I was going to say, like, that's they kind of, I'm guessing if you showed up and you saw that, it, that's a pretty imposing thing to attack. So it just kind of like scares people away. Hopefully. Well, there's only 30 soldiers there. Yeah, you know? obviously they didn't need. Yeah. Them. So, I mean, but yeah, the, you don't need that much, though, uh, especially with crossbows and stuff. Uh, the first constable of the castle was Sir William D. Seacon, who had previously been the first constable of. Rudlin Castle. Yeah, we're doing. You're doing great, as far <laughs> as I can tell with the pronunciation. Again, I'm sure if you're Welsh or you speak Welsh or you know something about Welsh pronunciation, I read a book when I was a kid where part of it took place in Wales, and there was like a whole like time in there. It was like a British kid who had gone to Wales to like recover from illness, and his friend that he met like tried to teach him how to speak Welsh, and I, I yeah, I it didn't help. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't help you. Other than <laughs> I think there's like some Ys that become an F. I don't know. I'm sorry. I didn't learn Welsh. Yeah. And some of the like letters look different. Like, oh, yeah. They'll be tilted in a different way than you're used to. And it's some dots and things. Yeah. It's very, very odd looking. <laughs> well, no, not odd looking. Just. It different. is to me, to me, odd, odd looking. <laughs> um, I mean, but they they have a really great sense of humor there. They're, they're just awesome people. I just, I, I can't understand a lot of what they're saying to me, though. So uh, in 1294, the Welsh rebelled against the English and surrounded Edwards and his troops at the castle for around two months. Wow. So he was stuck there. Um, but reinforcements did arrive to help. Chronicler Walter of Giesberg suggested that given the poor conditions, Edward refused to drink his own private supply of wine and instead had it shared out amongst the garrison. For some years afterwards, the castle formed the main residence for visiting senior figures and hosted Edward's son, the future Edward II, in 1301 when he visited the, um, the region to receive homage from the Welsh leader. It's really nice that he shared his wine. Yeah, I mean... They must have liked him. I, I mean, I I don't know. I don't know <laughs> if they liked him or not. Um, you know, I just thought it's like, he's so rich, he's going to share his wine with them. Yes, there you go. <laughs> or just because they're trapped there and he didn't want like a mutiny. Yeah, they're, yeah, that's probably it. So in the 14th century, the castle was not well maintained. 
By 1321, a survey reported it was poorly equipped and suffered from leaking roofs, and that led to rotten timber. Um, These problems persisted until Edward, the Black Prince, took over control of the castle in 1343. Uh, Sir John Weston, his chamberlain, uh, conducted repairs, building new stone support arches for the Great Hall and other parts of the castle. And after the death of the Black Prince, however, Conway fell into neglect again. Oh. Sorry. Okay. In the early 15th century, there was another Welsh rebellion where they unleashed a surprise attack on Conway. How many men do you think it would take down, I mean, take to take down a castle? I know. 500? A thousand? I mean, it's a mm. castle. Yeah, with catapults and stuff like that. Yeah. So you know how many men there were? Oh, man. Two, two men. So really, was it a revolt or was it just kind of like two guys that were upset? Uh, well, it was the Welsh that were rebelling against um, against the English, but they only needed two men to do it, though. Oh, well, so uh, like that was enough. Yeah, the rest of them all were outside cheering them on, probably. That's what I'm imagining. Okay. Oh, this is like a video game. Okay, I got it. <laughs> kind of. So they sent two men into the castle, and they pretended to be carpenters. Oh, it's like a Trojan horse situation. It is, yeah. Got it, got it. So when they gained entrance, they killed the two watchmen on duty and took complete control of the castle. Welsh rebels then attacked and captured the rest of the uh, walled, walled town. Okay, so more people. There were reinforcements, but they really... Yeah, this is just like a video game. I love everything about it. Okay. Except for the carpenter thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe they could have acted like plumbers and been like, hey, it's a me, it's a Mario. <laughs> uh, you think you that would have worked? I think it would have. Uh, so that was the rebellion, um, but it only lasted three months when they negotiated a surrender. Okay. Uh, Henry VIII, you've heard of him before, uh, right? Yes, yes. Uh, He conducted uh, restoration work in the 1520s and 1530s, during which time the castle was being used as a prison, a depot, and a potential residence for visitors. Okay, multi-purpose. Yeah, so, I mean, a a lot of those castles are really weird because they're like, these people were imprisoned and these people lived over here. Yeah. It's like, were they all imprisoned then, kind of? (laughs) Well, I'm guessing some of them could leave if they needed to. Uh, Maybe. Uh, Conway Castle fell into disrepair again by the early 17th century. Uh, Charles I sold it to Edward Conway, uh, which is funny that his name just happens to be Conway. I mean, um, I'm guessing it's spelled with an town. A, though. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, in 1627, and it was for 100 pounds. Oh, wow. It must have needed a lot of work. It did, yeah. And Edward's son also called Edward. They, they like to just keep using the same Edward, name. Edward, Edward, Edward. Uh, he, in, he inherited the ruin in 1631. Mm. So there were various, sta- various stages of repair since then. And in 18, or excuse me, 1986, it was declared a World Heritage Site. Oh, that's great. When you get that designation, then it's easier to get money and kind of keep things up. And there's a good chance it's not going to be destroyed. Exactly, yes. Or taken down for a mall. Yes. Like <laughs> we would do here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, so now it is a tourist attraction, uh, where they get around 180,000 visitors a year there. Wow. That's great. Yeah. So do you have anything to add to the history, Rebecca? Uh, just, you know, I don't know. I don't, uh, I have too much uh, any more history, but, um, it just, it's very interesting to see, um, when you, you know, like I said, go look at pictures online. Um, it's very pretty. And what's crazy is just like, it's in the town yeah you know like it's really kind of part of it almost i mean it's well the the, town was part of it at one time yeah and when you look at it i mean there's like a road going by it and then there's the waterway and then the town with the wall around it and the castle's just like a part of it i mean it's really cool yeah to see yeah it's a really it's a really interesting place it's beautiful and it it doesn't look like it it doesn't look like other castles around that area because it it had these uh, circular towers in there and it's built on like like a rock side, yeah, like a like it looks like a quarter mountain side or something like that. Mm-hmm. But it's so the circular towers, um, like they don't look at all what you would think that they would look like. They're they're huge. Yeah, very big. Yeah. 
so, okay, so let's go ahead and take a break and then we will get into the debate. Sounds good. Listeners, did you know there's a way to share with the world whether you're hashtag team believer or hashtag team skeptic, or for those who need it, hashtag team the middle? It's our store called Ghostly Gear. Yep. And we even have custom ghostly designs like microclimate or even the Easter Island Massacre or of the ghostly logo. Just visit our Ghostly Gear store right on ghostlypodcast.com to order your t-shirt, hoodie, mug, mask, whatever. (laughs) Okay, okay. I think we got it. Um, They just need to visit ghostlypodcast.com and click on Ghostly Gear to order right on the website and send us any ideas that you have for new merch. Exactly. Order your merch today and send us a pic of you in your ghostly gear. It's time for a debate. Let's do it. All right. (laughs) Okay. So as we've said, Conway is considered one of the most haunted castles in the world. So I'm going to start actually with just a quick basic sighting. Quick and basic. Yes. All right. Which is shadowy figures. Ooh. Shadow figures. Uh, People often claim to see silhouettes, dark figures, um, uh, watching the town below from the battlements and windows. Um, in the 16th century, um, King Henry VIII, as you said, used it as a prison. So people sometimes believe these to be past inmates. Uh, but they could also be soldiers, I suppose, too. Or it can also be the way that the sun is hitting the castle, making the shadowy figures. Well, and that's also assuming that it's during the day. Well, it could be during the day. I mean, I don't know. Well, it would have to be during anything. the day. You don't see shadowy figures at night off into the distance like that. Well, I don't know if you were below when you were... Well, then it's the moon reflecting (laughs) the way that the castle looks. Reflecting the shadow figure? No, there's no shadowy figures there. Well, I mean, what I thought you'd say is that they were just people like visiting and then maybe it just looked like they were shadowy Maybe if it was pictures or something like that, but no. (laughs) I I think it's just reflections off of the sun or the moon, Mm -hmm. off of light. Mm-hmm. Because th- that's what a shadow is. I mean, essentially, right? Yes. So that's what it is. It's just a light source that's hidden it in such a way that makes you think that. Mm-hmm. I told you the story about E.T. with no head that me and my cousin <laughs> both saw. Yeah. And there was no E.T. with no head. It was just <laughs> a shadowy figure. Gotcha. Uh, so what's your rating then? Zero. <laughs> uh, I'm actually giving this one a two. What? Um, yeah. This. I'm sorry, but I agree. Like there's just, there's, I mean, okay, so you're looking up at a building and you're like, I see a shadow out of the corner of that wind. I mean, like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just a shadow. Like, I don't, All right. Okay. And I couldn't find any specific story of a sighting either. All right. So another piece of evidence. Um, so before it was constructed, as you told us, mm-hmm. it was the home of the Cisterian Monastery or Cisterian, like, whatever it is. Um, and so this is one that we we hear more often, which is people see the spirit of two monks mm. um, that are said to haunt the castle. Um, they're in cloaks um, and they're seen floating in the corridors. Um, so or just dressed in robes, cloaks, something like that. Wait. So, the OK, so the shadow is the robes. There isn't like a robe just floating in the air. No, it's like a. it's okay. like you can't really see their faces, supposedly, and you can't see their feet. It reminded me a little bit of the um, Notre Dame, like mm. the monk that people would see there. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think this is um, hallucinations or trickery of the mind. 
<laughs> trickery of the mind is my new favorite <laughs> phrase. <laughs> phrase. So we have microclimates and trickery of the mind. I love. Yeah, it. I mean, you just see things that it, it's like an optical illusion. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next. Oh, zero. <laughs> zero. Okay. Yes. Uh, I give this one a five. A little bit more. There's a little bit more substance to it. But again, I couldn't find like a specific story of someone being like, I turned the corner and I saw this monk figure. It was mm. just more of like a people say that they see monks here, but like I couldn't find any specific story of a monk sighting. So, okay. Uh, all right. Next one. This one. Um, I think a little it sometimes gets linked to the monks. Okay, which is that visitors claim to smell incense in the old chapel, but there's no incense in there. Well, I mean, the thing is, is there there's a lot of wood and stuff in these castles, especially in the um, in the chapel area, and I think a lot of times this incense can be burnt into the wood. And Interesting. yeah, and it just has. You know, like my guitar always has this smell to it, and it's because that's built into it. It's the wood itself. So the 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 claim is that it doesn't always smell like incense. It's just sometimes it does. And so some and some people say that the smell of the incense is an indication that the monks are there. Okay. Uh, but I only read that in one place. Well, I mean, so sometimes it can get heated up a little bit more and smell a little bit more. Or sometimes there could be a breeze that hits it just in the right way that makes you smell it. Interesting. Uh, so that to me doesn't say anything about anything. So I'm going to give that one a zero again. Okay. Uh, this one, I'm going to give a six. A six. Okay. A little bit more for me because, again, it seems like there's actually some stories of this where people have that smell. Um, and I, I do think that um, a smell haunting, you know, it, that, that I, I, it's a thing. It's a little, little bit more believable. For okay. Me. All right. Now we're going to get into some more newer evidence. Modern. Modern. Yeah. Evidence. Modern Not evidence. just apocryphal stories, but like okay. actual things. So one claim has been, right, that soldiers are seen on the grounds, right? So, okay. kind of, that's, so just like the monks, mm -hmm. right? People claim to see as soldiers. In December of 2020. That's pretty modern. Pretty modern. North Wales Live, mm -hmm. the website, reported that a visitor named Denise Tillier captured what looks like a ghost soldier with a sword followed by a line of people in a photo that she took. Mm -hmm. She took the picture just because she thought it was an idyllic scene. Right. She didn't necessarily. It's like kind of right outside the castle or kind of like the entrance to it. I think it's kind of hard to tell. Um, but then when she looked at it later, she saw this figure of this soldier with a sword. Um, and then so she sent it to a friend of hers and she's like, hey, do you see this? Am I going crazy? And the friend was like, not only do I see this soldier that you're talking about, but I actually think I see people walking behind this soldier, like following him. Then she shares this with another friend, like, hey, again, please look at this. What do you see? He not only saw the figure and the people, but he also says that he believes that these are, um, they're not necessarily haunting anybody. Remember, uh, Bob has talked about, you know, people that just residual, residual hauntings, mm -hmm. that he thinks it's like that. They're just like in their zone and they're not, they're just doing their thing. And it's kind of like, they're almost like the two worlds meeting mm -hmm. with these figures. So I did share the picture with you. And of course, we'll put it in our show notes. If you want to see it, you can go look there right now on our website. Yeah. So I got a chance to look at the picture. And what I notice is beyond the little circle part where she circled, where she saw something, uh, the light persists above it. So to me, that is a sun flare or a you know, like a ray of light coming in just in that one area, which, I mean, happens sometimes. Uh, and I think that we are trying to form this image after the fact and say that we see this in it. Just like I always say, the bathroom tiles. You always see all <laughs> kinds of craziness in the bathroom tiles. Mm -hmm. It's one of those kind of things. I don't know. To me, I, I actually had a hard time seeing it at first because I didn't, I, I did too. I didn't look at it um, 
when it was like the circled part, Mm -hmm. right? Because I wanted like, hey, I want to see, you know, what it, you know, if I can see where this is. And it actually took me a minute to find it. Um, And so I see what you're saying, where there's like kind of sun that's coming down. Um, But uh, man, that part where the, the figure is, I mean, that is really, it is really distinct. I, I have a harder time seeing like the people behind it. I see no people behind it. I think it. you, you know, she said they zoomed in and, and kind of looked at it that way. So I, it's, it's a little harder to see that part of, um, but yeah, no, it, that man, that really looks like a, like a figure there. You know, um, one time I yeah. looked up to the sky and I swear I saw Homer Simpson in the clouds. <laughs> but that's just my mind trying to make a connection to that. Because Homer Simpson was like my TV dad, you know, kind of thing. So Interesting. I think this is explaining a lot about you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's one of those things that it's like your mind just kind of tries to make sense of what it's seeing. And not that it's seeing anything that unusual. It's just trying to put some some life to something that's really not there. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Well, anyways, I, I think it looks... I, I'm uh, Okay, so I'm going to give this another six. Okay, so that's pretty high for it, this. It, yeah, I mean, to me, I, it does look like a figure, but it's not an eight or a nine or anything like that to me because... I, again, I don't see the other people behind them, and I, I'm, I'm open to, you know, a little flexible on it. A photo takes a snapshot of one moment in time, and a lot can happen during that one moment in time to make these images one look like that. No, okay. No. Jeez, Rebecca. <laughs> um, you're going Whitney Houston on me there? Uh, so to me, no, this does not say anything. This is a this is a zero again. Wow. All right. So far I've not given higher than a zero on this one. Yeah, I, I just I just don't see these things there. You I know? know, I know. All right. Well we've got again, go look at it uh on our website, ghostlypodcast.com and okay. find our and our episode here. Um, okay, last piece of evidence today um, is a disembodied voice captured on a video by a pair of paranormal investigators, Carl Hassall and Sam Singleton of the Dark Arts Paranormal Group. While filming themselves exploring the castle, the camera captured the voice of a little girl whispering, don't tell them. They did not hear this at the moment. When they were filming it, it wasn't until they were watching the footage back that they heard it. See, that's the thing. It's like that's another time when you're when you're searching for something. So when I heard it, which took me five or six times playing this video, Rebecca had to tell me the time that it was at. And I kept listening at that time and I did not hear it at first. And then I heard Nutella. (laughs) (laughs) Is that because you had some Nutella yesterday? No, but I was really hungry at that time, and I could have went for some Nutella. That would have been nice. But no, I I mean, it could have been anything that caused this. It could have been um, the woman's shoes on the floor or something like that, or they crunched some 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 rock or something like that when they, because the floors are made up of like a rockish kind of thing at right, that level. but that, that doesn't level. sound like a little girl whispering. Yeah, but over a video camera? It could. It it sounded off mic. It didn't sound like it didn't sound like it was any kind of ghost or anything like that. It sounded more like maybe somebody said something off camera. Maybe maybe they just happened to walk in a certain way. You know, when you walk on a wooden floor, it makes creaks. When you walk on stones, sometimes they crumble a little. This was super scary. Not say scary, spooky to me. Um, I absolutely heard it immediately and it sounded otherworldly. It did not sound anything like it sounded like Nutella. Woman. No, it sounded like don't tell them. Nutella. Yeah, totally different. <laughs> and it did sound like a whisper. It was clear to me that it was not the people that were just, you know, the two people that were there. Um, yeah, it was super creepy. But I mean, here's the thing. I have nothing against 
any kind of Nutella or anything like that. I, I think <laughs> it's it's really good. I don't like Nutella sandwiches. It's like a little too much of it. I would prefer like on like a little cracker thing, you know, the cracker stick or something like that. Those are really good with Nutella. I got nothing against Nutella, so. <laughs> but I definitely think that this could be something else, especially since they didn't even notice it at the time. Well, to me, that's what I'm saying is that it was otherworldly. It was something that was only captured on the Yeah, camera. otherworldly, like make-believe world. Make-believe. It was total make-believe. Paranormal world. Okay, so uh, what's your rating? Zero. Do I need to ask? Zero. All right, this one's an eight for me. An eight? Yes. Rebecca, come super on. Super creepy, super paranormal. Nutella. Of course, we're going to have the vid- the link to the YouTube video it, in the show By the way, notes. there was no Welsh or English accent in that Nutella voice. That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. But I have no idea. I, I, it's hard to tell with a whisper. And who knows? who knows what spirit this is? <sighs> Don't know. Okay, so what is your overall rating then for Conway Castle, Rebecca? Uh, so my overall rating for Conway Castle is going to be a six. Oh, so not as haunted as what people have said, huh? Yeah, I will say. I mean, it's an looks like an awesome place to visit. Um, there, you know, again, there's a lot of reports of things, but I just I couldn't find a ton of specific stories other than this photo and this voice, and those were convincing enough. For me to go towards the haunted side um yeah but i i almost feel like it you know it's it's just it's a creepy castle so some of that might just be people feeling creepy while they're there okay how about uh, for you so i'm gonna go zero on it <laughs> I, you know that's an average of my <laughs> a clear of, average of, of my ratings here scientific I, i'm sorry i just don't think that there's enough evidence there to prove anything <laughs> Even to get me to a one or a two. Wow. I mean, yeah. So that brings us to the closing arguments. This is our last chance to convince you to vote our way. We are each given one minute of uninterrupted time because Rebecca likes to cheat. So we are going to do it on our own cell phones. We're going to time <laughs> each other to keep each other honest because Rebecca lies. I do not. So, Rebecca, are you ready? I am ready. Okay. And go. I do believe that Conway Castle is haunted. It has been around for 700 plus years. So much has happened there. Uh, lots of generations and um, different kinds of, you know, well, even before that, it was the monastery and then uh, being a, 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 a soldiers there, having prisons there. You know, uh, I do think that a lot of people have felt connected to that land and to that castle. And so there is some residual energy there. I think the incense seems seems like something potentially. Um, and then I can't, ah, it's hard for me to ignore the photo and the voice um, as being something showing that there is a bit of paranormal there. Uh, but it's not as extreme as I thought it would be um, based on um, the kind of build up to it, um, but still seems like a great place to go. And I'd love to uh, investigate it. All right. You're done. I am. Wow. You finished like three seconds early, Rebecca. Thank you. Wow. That's a first. No, it's not. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Okay. And go. Look, the basic fact is that we want to believe. We want to believe that there's a little magic still left on this earth. The reason we want to believe is it would make life easier and give us meaning behind going to work every day and doing the right thing. But do the right thing because you want to be a good person, not because you hope something is waiting for you when you die. I've spent a long time, like many of you, thinking that because it's unexplainable means that it's spiritual or paranormal or something not from this world— But unexplainable just means science still hasn't has room to grow. There's no ghost that can ever be 100% proven. Just like a lot of evidence, it can't currently be explained, but it will be. And that's what I have faith in. I put my faith in human beings because they can be proven to be real, and that's enough for me. Uh, I do not believe any way that Conway Castle has any kind of haunting to it. There's just no evidence. Wow. By the way, uh, everyone, he wrote that before the episode. I wrote that a couple of weeks ago, actually. Well, I was going to say that actually, to be honest, sounded a bit more beyond just Conway Castle. That sounded like Pat speaking to his critics. 
and very philosophical of you. I think I'm not speaking to my critics. I'm speaking to the listeners. Or to th- those that would wish you a believer, kind of giving your philosophy, I guess. Maybe. I'll say. I don't know. But no, it's, it was very moving. I mean, it yeah. very much gives an insight into to your heart and how, how you think about things. So, sure. Um, very helpful in that way. Well, I, you know, I just, I, after like the Enfield episode being 50 50, I'm just taken aback by that because there's so much you skeptical really can't evidence. I believe it, everybody. There's it's so, so funny. much skeptical I evidence. It's like, it's like Amityville. There's no, just not. as much, just as much skeptical evidence against it. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Please share us with your friends and family as word of mouth is our best advertisement. Remember to go vote in the polls. We need your vote. We need to know what you think so that the skeptics finally win another one. Uh, no, we need to make it clear to Pat that we believe in these hauntings. And remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already or follow or whatever it's called, like or whatever. Smash that like button. Or and hit the, the bell, bell for notifications and all that stuff <laughs> uh, if you're on YouTube. Uh, so this is our most ghostliest time of the year. Mm-hmm. So we are going to be talking about all kinds of castles throughout the month, weekly episodes. We will be back next week. We will. Uh, and we will be talking about the Edinburgh Castle uh, in Scotland on the next episode that comes out next week. Next week. And this is the one that we've both been to. So I'm yes. super excited to talk about it. I'm super excited too. But until next time, stay ghostly. Bye. Bye.